I'm here in Tbilisi, Georgia, walking down the capital city's main drag, Rustaveli Avenue, past the Metro and Parliament Building down to Liberty Square. I'm here with a group from Stanford Center on Democracy, Development, and the Rule of Law. Georgia has been pulled into Moscow's orbit by its current Georgian Dream government, despite the anti-Russian feelings on the part of many Georgians following Moscow's occupation of some 20% of Georgia's territory back in 2008. There's a lot of sympathy for Ukraine since Russia's invasion of that country in February 2022, and you can see Ukrainian flags all over the city. So I am in Tbilisi, Georgia. I'm really delighted to be talking to Nino Evgenidze. Nino is an old friend of mine. She is the director of the Economic uh, Policy Research Center in Tbilisi. She's been a leading advocate for democracy uh, in Georgia. And as you can see in the sign um, in back of her, she set up a Fukuyama <laughs> Democracy Frontline Center, which was a great honor. And it's, so it's five years old it's now? It's five years old now. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, that's, that's really terrific. Um, but uh, she's been observing the decline of democracy uh, in Georgia, uh, and it's a situation that's obviously been made much more critical by the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the war that's uh, still ongoing. We're talking uh, about all of this right at the end of April 2023, so the war has already been raging for some 14 months. So Nino, why don't you uh, just uh, give some background on what's been happening to Georgian democracy particularly since the rise of the Georgian Dream Party. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, before the war, there were six or seven big oligarchs that dominated yeah. the media and so forth, but uh, Georgia only has one, really. So this is Bidzina Ivanishvili. So how did he come to power and how did he come to exercise uh, power in this kind of non-transparent, uh, malign way? Yeah. As you are aware, he's a Russian oligarch. He gained all the, his wealth into R Russia. And in 2012, uh, when he came to, to Georgia back, it seemed like this kind of special operation against the Georgia, because in 2008, when Georgia was uh, like invaded, Russia realized that they don't have any, uh, like, you know, the ground them to rely. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, they started this kind of massive, how to say, operation against the Georgian people because maybe with the war you can occupy a country, mm -hmm. but you cannot con conquer mm -hmm. us, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, so they had an inside agent that was uh, yeah who that was they could use to here control in Georgia. Georgia. Yes, having a lot of money mm -hmm. and uh, his wealth, it's uh, like a one third of the Georgian GDP. Mm -hmm. And as you are aware, Georgia is a poor country mm -hmm. and uh, this uh, I mean he can buy everything and he can bribe everyone in mm -hmm. this country mm -hmm. and they started step by step every year you know to uh, backsliding from the different institutions the same way he was attacking all politicians and blackmailing them uh, he was just like you know the shutting down the free media and you know that the uh, independent media had Nick Guaramia he's sitting in a jail for nothing mm -hmm. there is no he was ahead of one of the independent Georgian journalists uh, yeah media stations. media, media station yeah. and they are still remain and they are still fighting for the uh, free speech and the, uh, like a democracy in this country and uh, uh, former president of Mikhail Saakashvili he was jailed and this, uh, I don't know, unheardable, uh, unhuman, uh, how they're treating him. So tell, talk about the, um, the foreign agent law that yeah. the Georgian Dream government tried to pass and then what happened in reaction on the part of Georgian civil society. Yeah, as you remember as well that in 2012, the Vladimir Putin introduced the same law into, the, into Russia. And uh, here as well, when we realized that they're bringing this law to the, like, you know, the, uh, to the table, and it was some kind of from this Russia playbook, the last, like, you know, the step. You have to, sh like, uh, shut down the free media representatives and then civil society organization, and you have, a, like, a <laughs> wool um, mm -hmm. power to, to the country. And the, we sit together 
somewhere 400 uh, Georgian civil society organizations and behind of us there were 1000 additional like you know the civil society organizations and we just make a statement that we're not going to register ourselves as a uh, foreign agents and we are very how to say keen on this regard mm -hmm. it's not going to be we're not going to give up on this and we will fight to the end all generation not only the youngsters all like a generations of the Georgians who are fighting for freedom, they were standing in the streets and defending, uh, defending to the like civil society organizations, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they know what the civil society organizations are doing for this country. Now they're trying to be more like a, make more damages to the country that the, our Western partners saying that, no, 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 we should not get the Georgia there. Right. So punishing Georgia by yeah. Cutting off the path to Europe is not the way to deal with this problem. Yeah, and why we think that to sanctioning this Russian oligarch and his close circle because um, it gives us more uh, like a possibilities and more efforts and more power inside of the country to squeeze their um, authoritarian like you know the steps. I'm at the Rooms Hotel in uh, Kazbegi. Uh, Georgia, we just got here this afternoon and we are in the middle of the Caucasus Mountains. Uh, behind me, you can see Mount Elbers, which is one of the highest mountains in Europe. Uh, and we are right at the, very close to the border of uh, Georgia and Russia. We're driving up the road to Kazbegi, passing an incredible number of trucks mostly from Armenia, that are waiting their turn to cross the border into Russia. Hundreds of thousands of Russians came down this road following the outbreak of the Ukraine war and the later announcement of conscription by Moscow in September of last year. Talking to Eka Gigauri, uh, we've known each other a long time. Eka is the head of Transparency International uh, in Georgia. Transparency International has been one of the leading uh, non-governmental organizations that's been trying to shed light on uh, the creeping uh, authoritarianism of the current uh, Georgian government. Uh, so Eka, maybe you can tell us a little bit about you know, what they thought they were going to accomplish by doing this um, uh, law and you know, what your response was. Uh, I think they had uh, several goals. One was to shrink the, the space for the civil society, definitely, uh, because um, uh, they, uh, they think that uh, one of the biggest uh, enemy for uh, the, the oligarchy regime that we have in Georgia uh, are the NGOs the, mm -hmm. and the, the uh, people working for the NGO community and people uh, uh, considering themselves as a, like civic activists and uh, uh, those who are members of the civil society here. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely they wanted to um, undermine also um, us mm -hmm. um, and not only these people who work for the NGOs but also uh, those who are working for media mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the third goal that they had was to, um, uh, to cut the funding for those groups because uh, if we look at uh, the other uh, agents of change mm -hmm. I, would sh uh, I would say in Georgia mm -hmm. those who are active yeah. on the ground so this these are uh, mm, uh, the political parties right so mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, many uh, people who are funding the political parties and who might uh, have the income and are ready to invest in politics in Georgia s uh, majority of them are under the investigation uh, all these uh, groups are not dependent on Iv Ivan Shuili and his regime so mm -hmm. he also wanted to cut the financial resources and to make sure that these resources will not be mm -hmm. um, invested in any action that can undermine the ruling regime. Mm -hmm. mm, and then um, uh, definitely they were thinking um, about the elections in 2024 uh, and these are very important elections for Georgia because uh, 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 Again, the government will try to maintain in power for the fourth term now. So, um, 
you would have been one of the first people that they would go after if they actually managed to pass the law, I yes. imagine. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. Uh, so the response to this law was really remarkable. Uh, the scale of the protests and the mobilization of civil society. How did that, how did that come about? And maybe you could just begin by describing the scale of you know, the, the backlash to the attempt to pass the law. So, and we had this uh, big meeting with them and we said that we should coordinate our actions. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when many activists and active people are in the room, you can imagine that all yeah. of them have different opinions. So we said that, you know, one thing that we should agree on is that there should be smaller, smaller group of people where we will have the public relations specialists as well. There's a strategic communication specialist and they will monitor media. They will monitor the message boxes of the, of the government government and they will try uh, to coordinate our messages, you know, mm -hmm. to work on the messages, particular messages, and then to make sure that everyone will speak in one voice. Right. Another group which was uh, dealing with the communication with international organizations and the donor community. Uh, there was a group also which was dealing and we expected that some people will be arrested. So the group of lawyers which was dealing with the legal issue because there was a smear campaign against particular individuals so we asked our colleagues again from other civil society groups to talk about this issue mm -hmm. so some those who were attacked and who was the pri primary target mm -hmm. there were so many human stories talking about like you know the civil society what is the civil society about mm -hmm. how georgian people is helping georgian people mm -hmm. We tried to coordinate the donor community as well. And I should say that it was a really special time when everyone in the donor community, all the embassies were coordinated and they actually followed our ask. The thing was with media. Again, we asked the critical media here that you know, this will be our messages. This is what you should show to the public. Again, mm -hmm. the human stories. What is the civil society about? What in, it's not only about the, I don't know, about the uh, monitoring of the elections, but it is about the children's rights as well. Mm -hmm. So, so that, um, as I understand it, uh, the demonstrations didn't just take place in Tbilisi, but they were all over the country. And that was also important in demonstrating how widespread the support for civil society was. Yeah, it was not only in Tbilisi, as I said, so there were many groups, the small groups, like, even like, you know, the small NGOs where only two or three people were mm -hmm. working, right? Mm -hmm. So all of them, all of them. So speaking of the fight to come, you have an election that will happen next year. Do you think there's a chance that the Georgian dream could actually be um, unelected, uh, that the opposition could put, cooperate sufficiently that they could actually win an election? I think that uh, it depends on us, mm -hmm. on the active citizens, of the, the citizens of, of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, many things uh, will be different after the final assessment uh, which we expected to have from the European Union, right? So we, uh, the, I mean the Georgia, uh, is expecting the final answer from, uh, from the Commission on the EU membership candidate status, mm -hmm. right? So, um, if we get no, then I think the elections in 2024 will be referendum, mm -hmm. Russia or the West. Mm -hmm. Everything that they do is just to, to um, make the situation worse. Uh, as you know that they arrested the head of the critical media uh, mm -hmm. outlet, mm -hmm. Nika Guaramia, ten, I think 10 days or two weeks before the first decision uh, from the EU. And mm -hmm. this is apparently why we got to know and the Ukraine and the Moldova mm -hmm. got the status. So what I want to say, uh, it's important for Georgian people to understand that these are very important elections and we all should go and vote. Mm -hmm. I think for the opposition, it's very important to unite. Mm -hmm. I mean, may maybe not all of them, but like to have at least two big groups. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And um, because there will be new electoral system, 5% uh, threshold, it will be very difficult for the smaller parties to uh, pass this threshold. Of course, we'll need um, uh, the donor community 
uh, who will uh, uh, who will um, uh, strengthen all these groups on the ground, which mm -hmm. are very important for the for the for the elections. Mm -hmm. And this is the civil society. This is like you know, also the work on the capacity building of the political parties. They do a lot, but they should continue doing this and also strengthening the critical media here. Yeah. yeah. Well, Eka, I hope that uh, we get some change in government in the next election. So that I have great admiration for all the work that you've done over the years, but particularly in meeting this uh, this challenge, which is uh, you know a really serious one to democracy in Georgia. So keep up the good work, and uh, Thank you. you know best of luck in in you Thank know maintaining Georgia's democracy uh, Thank you. down the Thank road. You.